I'd like to now move on to the general solutions of sine function. So this is what the general solution looks like. And unfortunately, there's nothing more than I can teach you than to memorize this. Because at the level for year 12 extension one maths, we can't prove it. So this is something that you just have to commit to memory. We have x equals to n pi plus negative one to the power of n times inverse sine of alpha. So our angle or value there. Now what n stands for is just any number. So any integer. So what the general solution does is it tells you about all the values that sine could be. So, you know, most of the time you'll see solve sine something for between zero and two pi. But if it doesn't specify a domain, then we have to write a general solution where it could be any answer, okay? The other way that the general solution is used for is sometimes when you want to find multiple solutions and you can use it to work out each one of those and see how it fits into the domain you've been given. Now, so the n is the integer where you just substitute numbers such as 1, 2, 3, etc. in and this is our alpha, so our angle or our value. Alright, let's see how we use this now in the questions. So, question 26. Find the general solution of sine x equals to 1 on square root 2 in terms of pi. Okay, so generally your general solution will be in terms of pi and questions like this does come up in exams where it just tests your knowledge of the general solution. So it really is just testing that you have memorized this equation here where x equals to n pi, remember, minus 1 power of n multiplied by inverse sine alpha. So we just substitute this value in here and now we just need to work out this value there. So we think sine of what equals to one on square root two. Great, that's pi on four. And that's your final answer there. So your n is gonna stay n because that is what makes it general that whatever number you substitute in there, any integer is gonna satisfy this equation. Okay, so remember, we're not working out where n equals to. That stays there for the general formula. All right, moving on to 27 now. So find general solution of sine x equals to negative square root 3 on 2 in terms of pi as well. So this is our equation here. Yeah, n pi plus negative 1 power of n. Now substitute in negative square root 3 on 2. We just work that out. So this becomes, remember how this becomes negative inverse sine of square root 3 on 2? So we just think to ourselves sine of what becomes square root 3 on 2? That's pi on 3 because we have that negative there. That's why it becomes negative pi on 3. Now you can take that negative out or you can leave it in. It really doesn't matter. Either way, it's going to be correct. Okay, so you can see with the negative, it's quite similar. The only difference is we do have to do that extra step to work out this negative there. All right, so in question 28, it's slightly different because we want to solve sine x equals one on square root two, but we've been given a domain that x must be between zero and two pi. So here, we don't want to write it in the general form. But what we want to do is we can use a general formula to work out the values that fall in between there. So let's see what I mean by that. So we've just substituted one on square root two into the general formula there. What is sine of what equals to one on square root two? It's pi on four, okay? And now we just substitute in numbers and see if it falls between that. So I always start off with n equals to zero. So substituting in zero and zero, you're going to have zero times pi is just zero. This just becomes one, essentially. Pi on four, so your answer is just pi on four. Let's check that. Yes, it does fall between there. Okay, moving on to n equals to one. So this just becomes pi. This is negative. So we have pi minus pi on four, which is three pi on four. 
checking that. Yes, that does fit in there. And we can test n equals to 2. And that becomes 2 pi plus, that's going to be pi on 4, which is too large, isn't it? Because 2 pi plus anything is going to be greater than 2 pi. So you know it doesn't fit in there. And same with negative 1, it doesn't fit into the domain. So therefore, we've worked out using the general formula that x equals to pi on 4 and 3 pi on 4 as well. So this is an example of how we can use a general formula to work out a question even when it does have a specified domain.